What's happening, everybody? Ryan Thomas here on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Greatly appreciate you guys tuning in each and every episode. I knew that I would be hopping on for this one. Um, Obviously, I don't want to say that this is a little bit old news. Don't want to say that because it only happened yesterday, but I, I try to be a little bit more... Um, shall I say, up to date or on time with certain stories that take place. Uh, I will tell you that this was a story that I reacted to instantly um, without much thought because I don't think much thought is needed when analyzing this story. Um, But I think there's layers to opinions, of course, and I have a few layers to my opinion in regards to the breaking article that was a three-part series from a former guest on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast, none other than Tyler Dunn of GoLongTD.com. And just to provide you guys a perspective on that, Tyler was on the show a few times over the last three years, and I had a full you know, list of guests last season, week in, week out, and this season has been more of a retrospective, you know, take on take by yours truly. Haven't had as many guests on the show, just frankly, due to timing and scheduling and just try to, you know, build the show my own way. And much like those reasons that I had, Tyler wanted to build his site his own way and go independent as somebody that had worked for the Buffalo News as a sports journalist, worked in Milwaukee at the Milwaukee uh, Milwaukee Sentinel, and covered the Green Bay Packers as well as the Buffalo Bills, and then worked for Bleacher Report uh, in Green Bay as well, and then decided, you know what, I'm going to go independent and, and build up my own website on Substack. And a lot of people, a lot of prominent journalists, Tyler Dunn being one of them, Another friend of mine, Ariel Hawani, did the exact same thing, um, which has worked out tremendously uh, for both journalists. So first off, explaining that process, journalism is one whole entire field and podcasting is a form of broadcasting that can get uh, opinions out there, content out there, if you will. It's a form of content creation. So I know both sides of that aisle. I, I understand both sides of that aisle. Uh, I have far more experience in the podcasting um, field than I would in the in the journalism field. I even have more experience in the broadcasting radio field. Being said, I understand full well what these few fields represent. And I just have to say, I was embarrassed, I was stunned, and not really surprised, come to think of it, the amount of other podcasters that call themselves as such in the area that have no clue, no clue whatsoever what journalism actually is. And journalism, at a high level, is uncovering or finding a story that was buried by another entity, bringing it to light, bringing a story to light, whether it's a story that people agree with, whether it's a story that the form and fashion on how it was done is disagreed upon or agreed upon, however you see fit of how Tyler Dunn achieved what he did achieve in getting us all to talk about his story on his site, that in and of itself is a form of journalism. That's what journalists do. They find the stories that nobody can find and they expose those stories. And this was a story worth exposing. This was a story that needed to be exposed. And when we talk about people that are in high positions, high ranking positions as top tier people in an organization, any one of the 32 NFL organizations, any major business corporation, 
There is a standard that has to be set and a standard within the individual in that position that has to be met. And unfortunately, with these statements that were then uncovered within this story, you would know and I would know that at one point Sean McDermott made a mistake. And much to the chagrin of the Bills fans that don't want to admit that Sean McDermott's made a lot of mistakes, this one is the biggest mistake of them all. Because it shatters a portion of the glass that already has cracks in it. It's got cracks in it on the sideline. Now it's got cracks in it off the sideline. And it blows the whole thing open in terms of what are we really looking at here? What what it, it, Does this mean, this story, does this mean that there's reason to believe that we can't rely on this coach to the level that we had thought we could? Does this mean that family and the process should not be trusted? Those are worthy questions that great journalists make you ask yourself once reading their column. That, again, is another layer foundationally of journalism. And I've gone head-to-head with so many people on X, formerly known as Twitter, that I'm just blown away by the fact that podcasters who have no form of formal education whatsoever that would even dare to say what is or what is not journalism. I'm not a journalist. I am a podcaster. I would never come out and say this is what a journalist should not do in the form of fashion in which Tyler Dunn did it. Ever. Tyler Dunn did nothing wrong other than his job and exposed a story based on research, based on finding sources that could confirm the story. Sources never name names. Again, something that I saw on X that people said, well, why don't the sources name themselves? They do not name themselves. Sources never reveal who they are in a journalist that is a great one or even a novice journalist never, and I mean never, reveals who their source is, nor should he or she ever do so. But when you're dealing with people that are littered within this fan base that have no idea what journalism actually represents, then in fact you're going to see tweets like that. Then in fact you're going to see takes like that that are just saying, oh, this is just an article to divide the team. If an article divides a team from four, from a statement that was made four years ago, then maybe there's more than just an article to be feared. Maybe we have more reason to fear other things, like the fact that this team on the field cannot win close games. They just can't. Sean McDermott has the worst winning percentage with a lead of one or eight points. One, two, eight points in the NFL wins losses wise. So seven and five record since 2021, including the postseason, while maintaining a one to eight point lead heading into two minutes left in the game. Seven and five. So that's a topic within the game. But the statements that were made in 2019 to the team were real. People wondered, while reading the article at the time, if they were real. Then Sean McDermott himself came out to the media yesterday and acknowledged that they were real. So first, people within this fan base said that the story was fake. Then the coach that was in question confirmed it was real. And then the fans said, well, Tyler Dunn's just doing it. When are we going to start realizing what the actual problem is rather than attacking someone for just doing their job? That's what I'm that's what I'm curious about. And when we're at that point, which is a six and six season facing the Kansas City Chiefs upcoming, we have to acknowledge that. This is it right here. This is it. If the Bills lose this game, they are not making the playoffs. 
The Bills win this game, they live to fight another day. They lose, they are not making the playoffs, in my opinion. I don't, I don't see how that could happen. I don't see how a team could keep losing these massive AFC games and, and make it. So I've seen it all. I've seen every fan try to nitpick, decipher what this means. I've had fans tell me that I'm gatekeeping due to the comment that I made, the tweet that I made, that it baffles me that podcasters would even dare to tell journalists how they should do their job when they don't even understand what journalism actually is. It's pathetic, to be honest. And it makes this fan base that does rely on content creators like myself and others look really, really bad. I don't think Sean McDermott's perfect. I don't think he's even close to perfect. But he was portrayed as somebody that can consistently be the head of an organization as a head coach. That concept doesn't quite look the same as it used to. For a lot of reasons, this is just another one of those reasons. So... No, will he be fired during the year? No, he will not. But there is obvious reason to review that at the end of the year. Let this season finish out. Let this season play out and see what happens. Depending on the record we finish with, do we move forward with him or not? I don't think they do. I don't think they should. And I've said this for a few weeks now, but now this just adds another layer to the entire season that has been. A horrible week this week in terms of public relations for the Buffalo Bills. Horrible week. With not just this story in terms of the remarks that Sean McDermott made to his team uh, four years ago. But the fact that Von Miller will more likely than not dress in this game and play in this game while being under investigation for domestic violence allegations. That, to me, is disgusting. And to be honest with you, I felt like the Brandon Bean, Sean McDermott press conference uh, in the you know midweek press conference prior to this stuff, Monday's press conference or Tuesday's, I believe, was very strange as well in terms of how they answered the questions from the media in regards to the situation if Von Miller's name was Matt Ariza, he'd be cut, um, and, he, and he was not. So, And I'm not saying that he should be cut, but it just goes to show you the double standard that is the NFL if you're a f- you know, future potential Hall of Fame player and you get accused of something, well, he's accused. If you're a rookie punter that was drafted in the fifth or sixth round and you get accused of something else, you're cut. So just goes to show you the double standard that is the current climate of the Buffalo Bills and the NFL as well. I think most teams would make that same decision. So as I sit here, I sit here less confident in Sean McDermott's ability to not only coach, but to lead. I sit here less confident in the vision that he laid out for the team six, seven years ago in terms of where it is at now. It appears as if this era has always had cracks in the ceiling, and it's just a matter of time before this ceiling fully caves in on Sean McDermott and the rest of the Buffalo Bills team. And it appears as if each and every week, win, lose, or draw, the season has just taken on a life of its own. And this is another headline, another storyline that is a massive distraction from the task at hand and beating the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know what? Very well, the Buffalo Bills should, and I think they will beat the Kansas City Chiefs this week. But all in all, they'll be 7-6, and six, still with their backs against the wall, still with a coach that more people have doubted now more than ever before. And that's the current state of the Buffalo Bills in and of itself. Journalism. Finding the stories that no one can find and putting them out there based on facts and sources. That's what was done. 
It was confirmed by the subject person, subject matter at hand. And people didn't like it. Well, they don't call the shots. The big man upstairs does. You can only pray and hope that this team turns it around and that more storylines like this do not come out because they shouldn't be happening, period. Not because they're being hidden, but because it shouldn't be happening at all. I'm Ryan Thomas. That was the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. The Buffalo Bills will beat the Kansas City Chiefs this week 34 to 28.